Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this how to play video I'm going to take a look at one of the hottest new decks around which is the Prince Kelaset Tempo or Aggro Rogue. Rogue is finally back in the meta, it went away for a while, it didn't quite find itself during the early days of the Knights of the Frozen Throne but now Rogue is back and it's back with a blast. So. This deck, this is an immensely powerful deck. This is a fairly standard build of the deck. There are still several competing variants of the deck around. The first variants were a bit slower, running more elemental synergies. Those are quite obsolete by now. But there are still a couple of different versions. So when looking at this list, then some lists also include stuff like Bidetite Hydra. They sometimes even got the scale bands for that. Some lists include Plague Scientist, don't include Dark Reaper perhaps, and some lists for example include Vicious Fledgling and even occasionally you can see the Curator for card draw. But overall I would consider this to be pretty much the standard list, this is just about as standard as it gets. And regardless of the variation, this deck is very very powerful. So the central focus of this deck is obviously the Prince, Prince Kelaset. 2 mana 2-2 two, two, that gives all of your minions in the deck plus 1 plus 1. Only the ones in the deck, not the ones in your hand. So Prince Kelaset buffs everything else up and then you start drawing minions that are increasingly powerful and then you just slam them on the board and you win the game. But there are some things about Prince Kelaset. One is the decision to shadow step it. So you have Shadow Step. So if you happen to have Prince Kelaset and Shadow Step available, you can play the Prince, Shadow Step it, play it again. Boom, that's plus two, plus two for everything in the deck. But it's not always the right thing to do. For example, against Shaman, you generally don't want to do that because Shaman has lots of ways to deal with those buffs. They have stuff like Devolb. And using that Shadow Step later, together with something like an SI7 agent, or to get a wild spine slayer, maybe even a bone bear, can be better than just using it with the prince. So you have to take into account what your hand looks like, what what's the overall situation. One thing that can make playing Shadow Step with Prince Kellas much more attractive is if you have access to South Sea Captain already. So let's say you have South Sea Captain in your hand, you Shadow Step the Prince, then you play the South Sea Captain and it pulls that plus two plus two buffed patches from your deck. So that's a pretty strong consideration, for example, on thinking whether to shadow step the prince or whether to save the shadow step to be used with some kind of combo card. One notable thing about this deck is that it really lacks card draw. There's, in this particular list there's no card draw whatsoever. In some lists there's the curator for card draw. But you do have some card generation in the form of Shrash Burglar and in the form of Shaku. So those can help you a little bit in generating resources that you otherwise don't have. Still, whenever there is a deck that has very little card draw, that basically means that that deck is fairly aggressive. It's looking to close out the game. This deck plays like a tempo deck, like a fairly aggressive mid-range deck. So you want to play your threats, you want to control the board. You need board control in order to make use of Cobalt Scalebane, in order to make use of Bone Mare. But then you want to increasingly move your efforts towards hitting the opponent in the face and closing out the game with stuff like Leroy Jenkins, stuff like South Sea Deckhand, Gold Bloods, Shadow Steps, that sort of thing. Overall it's a very powerful deck, very pretty straightforward to play, but there are some some nice nuances like thinking about the Prince, thinking about the South Sea Captain, doing some things with Edwin, using the stealth of Shaku to your advantage, thinking when you can safely play a gold blood in order to maximize the damage that you can get from that, setting up boards that the Cobalt Scalebane is able to buff optimally, trying to set up a board where you get to play the Bone Bear as guaranteed as possible on 7, ensuring that you have combo pieces to use the Wild Spine Slayer with. Well, lots of these kind of small nuances, but overall a fairly straightforward and powerful deck. I've prepared some gameplay videos of this deck for you, so let's go take a look at them. And remember, if you enjoy this content, then like this video and subscribe to my channel for more. 
Let's go take a look at that gameplay. I have to keep the deck hand. I just have to start contesting the hunter's board. I can't leave the hunter's board uncontested. That is just not the way it works. I mean, if he opens with the alley cat, I can dagger up. I can save the deck hand here. Or I could play double firefly. Daggering up is better. I'm trouble trading here. Then I have the option to play captain next turn. Or to play Shaku. Well, captain doesn't make this fellow survive, the grandmother. White on the board or Shaku? Why don't the board is likely to be better? Why don't the board is likely to be better? Let's see what I can get from the Shrash Burkler first. Festival, so it's fine. Then we're going wide. Then we're so killing the grandmother. There goes the grandmother. We have only three power on board, but it becomes four with the South Sea Captain. South Sea Captain and trade two. Infested Wolf and trade all three. South Sea Captain trade two leaves me with four power on board. That's more than what the Infested Wolf is giving me. Infested Wolf is more mana efficient and more resilient. I guess I'm going with the Wolf here. Let's go with the wolf. Let's go with the wolf. Get a tree tree that gives me a couple of one ones. But Hunter has a lot of cards. And a silence. Interesting. Oh, everything goes tree in my hand. That's pretty bad. I mean, I have the option to hit him in the face. Shadow step the wolf. Replay the wolf and play Edwin. That will leave him with a fortree on the board, but it's not a beast. So I think I'm going to go for that. Shadow step the wolf. Replay it with the death rattle and play a 6 6 Edwin. Well, he has, still has a minion, but it's not a beast. So we'll have to figure out how to deal with this board. Willaker just subscribed. Thank you. Oh, he hit the deadly shot. Ouch. That hurt. The deadly shot. Hurts when that happens. It really, really hurts when that happens. But how do I do this? I guess I play Shaku. I will kill this one. But I'll give Shaku the cold blood. Was it right to give Shaku the cold blood this turn? Maybe not. Say I top deck a wild spine slayer. Hand and unleash too. He has many nice things. Oh, I'm losing this one. That feels bad. 13 down to 9. Yeah. Do I have to kill the Spellbreaker? I probably have to spend Shaku on killing the Spellbreaker. I can't afford to take that damage. I can't set up a clock. I have to try to set up a clock. I have to. It's the only way. The only way is to set up a clock here. Yeah. 
kill the only beast. Don't let any beasts come true. Try to deny kill command potential. He has five here right now. I'm not dead to a kill command yet. There's a two one. I can make that a four three. Scamble and Shaku giving you Rexa. Maybe something like that. South Sea Captain. South Sea Deckhand. Dispatch Kodo. If I leave him with five, that's seven. That's potential lethal with a kill command. So this turn has got to be the South Sea Captain into the deck hand. Three plus two into the dispatch code. Dispatch code on deck hand there. This guy here. And I will trade there. But then I have only 11 on the board, so he still has at least two turns. Okay, I can kill the Bittertide Hydra. Six plus seven is 13, 13 plus four. That's lethal, right? SI7 Agent hits the Hydra. That's 3 to face. 11. That's lethal. I don't even have to hit the Hydra. I could have done that for style points. No sweet prince. But there's a coin and there's an SI7 agent. I think I'm holding on to those. Alternative was to mulligan everything for the prince. Definitely a viable alternative. But I felt with the coin the SI7 is just good enough to hold. I don't have the prince. So I can I can pull the patches now. It's fine. And getting a piece of AoE is not bad. In a matchup where usually there isn't any. Unless he has the Prince. XXY Captain is not a keep. Well, I guess you could argue for the Captain as well. I just think SI, SI is generally better. Captain gives you patches, which can then it's it's going to be a two-two patches if you don't draw it, and then you're probably losing it anyway. So I think SI is stronger. This is a very tempo-based game. I think I want the SI on the board. I don't have any one drops or two drops to play. He can use his dagger to clear up the entire board unless I have the SI there. SI gives me more options. Shaku will be a big deal though. And all those shadow steps. I'm a rank one uh, to playing Taunt Warrior. Nice. An option is simply to play another SI. He can kill one SI every time. 
is relatively unlikely to kill two. So I think I need to play. I think I need to play these out for tempo with with the hand I have. I just don't think I can afford to save them. I just have to hope he doesn't have stuff like backstab, SI7 agent, that sort of stuff. Because she's, these shadow steps would be pretty good with the SIs as well. If an SI agent, 7 agent survives. He found his prince. So now I need to be even faster. Interesting that he didn't... Oh, that's interesting. So I need to play my Shaku. I need to hit him in the face with both of these. And then I need to shadow step one of them. And use the combo effect to kill the prince. This will allow me to apply the maximum amount of pressure. But nothing else is. So there is still a way. That Edwin is pretty good though. Is there really a way for me to challenge this? Well, the Shaku is always going face here. Because we are in a race. Oh, Sap. Beautiful Sap. That is interesting. Well, I'm sapping this Edwin every time here. And probably playing both minions over playing the dagger. I have the option to shadow step Shaku to make sure he cannot kill it. Then I will lose the Leroy out. I think I'll go for that. Let's get the stealth Shaku out. Leroy out is only 5%. There's a high likelihood that this is better. It's still going to be a pretty rough race, but... If I play the Cobalt Scalebane now, Shaku has 5 attack. If he doesn't play a Taunt next turn, I kill him with the Bone Mare. Have we seen any Taunts yet? No, we have not. He has Bone Mare turn coming. Maybe that's too risky. If he has Bone Mare in hand, I play just the Scalebane, then he wins, right? I'm, I'm behind because he has had the Prince. I have to trust that there's no Bone Mare. Without Bone Mare this is lethal. I just have to trust the no Bone Mare. Top deck Bone Mare. The best kind of Bone Mare. If I take 7 I go down to 18. That's 11 on board. I'm dead to double cold blood. He might still have a second bone mare in hand as well. Double cold blood is lethal. 
bone marrow coat blood is lethal. I have no way to win over bone marrow anyway. Let's see. Double coat blood or bone marrow coat blood. Or just the bone marrow. What do you have? Do you have the bone mare? That one was off the top. But is there another? Is there another in hand? There isn't. I win. I have lost count on all those Anduins and Razas. Everyone has had an early Raza so far. I went with the mulligan everything for the Prince plan. That's the plan we're on right now. I can drop a Firefly confidently here, especially with the SI7. If he plays Cleric, I can coin SI7 and go from there. But he's not going to play Cleric this turn. He could have a Golaka, which would be pretty annoying against my Naga Corsair. Oh, I could also coin Shaku. Bunch of options. Let's say he has Raza on 5, I want to coin the Vile Spine. So I'll use the Dagger to protect my minions. Use the minions to hit face. It's going to be Shaku on tree. I'm a little bit concerned about the potential of a crawler. Well, Doomsayer does mean that I cannot do much here. I can't even coin, coin away, coin wild spine yet, so I can't kill the Doomsayer. It's just hitting face and daggering up. Not much else to do. This gives me the potential to play Corsair on 4. Oh, Kasakus on 4. That's pretty. So now I need to Flame Elemental SI7. Probably to deal with the Kasakus. Establish a board. So far he has had pretty good stuff here. But so much depends on the potion he got. Oh, but the prince. Prince means that I will use the prince. And then coin the SI7. Yeah. Let's do it like this now. So now the patches will be a little bit bigger. But we're also coming to the Dragonfire Potion turn, so... Problems are by no means over. That seems like a waste. That also seems like an indicator that he doesn't have any AoE. Or then he just doesn't want to let me know he has some AoE. He tries to bait. That's the other option. I want to set the flame elemental to activate the wild spine if I need it. So I can't use a lot of mana this turn. I guess it's the captain play. Captain gives me a little bit of stuff on the board. Let's go face, let's go face, I will dagger up. The really holy smite shadow word pain seems like a Terrible overreaction to 5 power on the board when he's at full health. So I really wonder what he has up there. Just that. Well, I guess he doesn't have Raza. So I could use the Wild Spine Slayer. That's going to be Flame Elemental Wild Spine Slayer here. Is his hand this bad? Yeah, I... I'm... I... I don't know what's going on. The true rattling. That's, that's the true story. I simply do not know what's going on here. here we go. 
I simply have no idea. And that makes me wary, because I don't understand what's going on. He had Raza, but he chose not to play it. So I can play Naga Corsair into SI7. Everything dies to a Dragon Fire Potion. Not everything dies to an. Not everything dies to an. Anduin. Alternatively, I can Bone Mare. I think I go Naga Corsair SI7. South Sea Captain. South Sea Captain is size 7. I might do that. I'll trade with the patches. I'll throw in the core plug as well. So now I have a couple of 4 fours in case he wants to play Andrew in this turn. I have a read that he doesn't have Dragonfire Potion. But my, all my reads about his hand are apparently terribly wrong. Because somehow he has the exact cards that I don't think he should ever have. Well, it's time to play the Shaku here. I guess I will play the Naga Corsair and the Deckhand, even though the Deckhand doesn't have charge and this doesn't buff a weapon. Maybe doing the weapon hit last turn was wrong. Hard to say. So we've seen the Dragonfire Potion, we've seen the Kasagus Potion. Now we've also seen the Shadow Word Death. I haven't seen a Potion of Madness yet. I don't want to give him Potion of Madness target. I do want to kill the Priest of the Feast, I believe. So this time it's Bone Bear on Shaku, which will let me kill the Priest. And also push a little bit of damage to face. Now does he have his Undoing already? Shadow of Death is now gone as well. Shadow of Death is gone. Dragonfire Potion is gone. Pain is gone. What? So now he gets Holy Fire or Shrash Burglar. 11 plus 3. So he might have a holy fire. How much damage do I have? I have 11, 14, 15, 18, 23 damage. I am 2 off. So Shaku is always going face here. Inner fire but no inner fire targets. But I need to kill the auctioneer. I can't let him keep drawing cards. I'm going to have to assume he has a holy fire in his hand. I can play this rush burglar though. Let's see what that gives me first. That's a target for his potion of madness. I can't play that. I'm going to have to kill this one because I don't have lethal. Shrash in the spell. Yeah. Trying to, trying to. But I can't play the Crystalline Oracle because that gives him a target for Potion of Madness. Well, there's currently also a target for Potion of Madness, but this one is not as good as the one, one that gives him more cards. And it's absolutely the play if he has it. He heals his face first and then he plays it. So 
So he doesn't have the Death Knight. What does he have? Holy Nova. Oh, he has the Holy Fire from the Vision, though, right? Of course. But I can't let him draw cards. 23. How much damage do I have? I have 10. I have 15. Which is not enough. But I can Bone Mirror Crystalline Oracle. He doesn't. He didn't have Undoing. If he had Undoing, he would have played it every single time there. I need to deny card draw. Dragonfire Potion is already gone. I don't want to give him Potion of Madness targets. But I can now play the Crystalline Oracle because I can Bone Bear it. And if he doesn't draw Undoing now, this should be okay. Why then he hasn't healed Cleric for card draw? I just had to read that he wanted to really heal his face. But I might be wrong. He might have Undoing already. I just have a really, really strong read that he doesn't. Now he's at 19. I have 16. I'm, I've got this. 16. Yeah. That's game. I was able to win a priest. It took me a while to be able to win a priest, but I was finally able to win a priest. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.